Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more Pokemon Platinum! Last time, we made a return to Pal Park and saw all that we could see there from transferring in specific Pokemon! And then headed off to Snowpoint Temple where we waged a rather anticlimactic battle against Regigigas to say the least. Seriously, it was kind of a ripoff. This time, we are going around the Sinnoh region once more simply just to see all the things that we haven't had a good place for. Since there's a lot of miscellaneous topics that don't really fit into any particular good spot. So we're going to start off by making a return to Mr. Backlot's mansion since it's been a while since we've been here. We just simply go inside, we want to head on over to the right wing, or the east wing I suppose. Not the right wing, right wing does not have quite an important sound to it. Let's talk to the butler. How do you find it, Master's Upgraded Trophy Garden, I mean? You did notice the influx of quite rare Pokémon, yes? But that's only to be expected. It's Master's Trophy Garden. After you have gotten the National Dex, the Trophy Garden will indeed be upgraded. There are many new encounters that you can find around these parts. This is the very first time in the entire series that you were able to just simply go out and find wild Eevees. A lot of these Pokemon we've already gone over, and I'm just going to show what they are on screen right now, rather than give each and every one of them bios, because it is quite a dump of Pokemon that we can get all at one time. And I'm treating this like it's the Poke Radar and like all those other things that allow you to find a lot of Pokemon all at the same time, swarms. It's a lot at one time, so there you go. That is everything that you can find. Among all the Pokemon that appear in the newly upgraded Trophy Garden, one of them stands out as being useful for something other than battling, and that Pokemon is Ditto. Ditto is capable of breeding with any Pokemon at all that can produce eggs. It is a godsend when filling in your Pokedex, especially if you're transferring in Pokemon from your Game Boy Advance games. It's great for that purpose. However, it might be useful to you in obtaining a certain Pokemon that cannot be obtained by any way other than breeding. There is a lone legendary Pokemon that is capable of producing eggs in the daycare. This is the only time anything like this has ever happened. So, what happens when you mess with science and force a legendary Pokemon to breed? Fion happens! With one leg and a third arm growing out of a lump on its head, it is a monstrosity born of the loins of Manaphy! Drama aside, it's not very good. <laughs> it's a Manaphy, but with 80 in every stat instead of 100. It has no way to learn Tail Glow, no way to learn Heart Swap, and unlike any other baby Pokemon, it will never evolve into Manaphy. I have broken this news to so many friends who weren't able to get a Manaphy of their own, but were able to get a Fiona from trades. They traded up near level 100, and then eventually broke down and asked me, okay, when the crap does this thing evolve? Telling them the truth about that was the scariest part of all. <laughs> yeah, so Fiona is not exactly good, but it's kind of interesting that that's there. If you have a Manaphy yourself and you don't really feel like trading it out, you can always give somebody a Fiona as it is tough to get. And on that note, if you are able to get a Manaphy, it's basically a two-in-one event legendary. Really good for completing your Pokedex. So that's all there is that I want to talk about in Selassion Town, or Selassion Town, or however we say it. A lot of these places have... I, I'll admit, I have mispronounced a lot of areas on our journey. Uh, so let's head on out to the Resort Aria. Since I did say that we were going to show the villa being filled in, and I have not done crap with this place, I was thinking it would be kind of cool to fill it in because you get visits from various characters after you do. It's sort of a neat feature, but it's very expensive to do, so I think I'm just going to order one more item here. Uh, what do we got here? Chandelier. Oh man, I can't afford the bed. I wanted to have Dawn over for a visit. Okay, no. I don't think that actually makes her come over and visit. It'd be funny if it did, but it's it probably doesn't. Uh, actually, maybe it might be better for me to conserve my money for other things. I will simply just show you. This is what it looks like after you have filled in the entire villa. The items go in set locations. It's not much of anything special. 
but it's kind of a neat little side distraction should you have more money than you know what to do with if you've been grinding up your Pokemon for much too long. I just realized for the very first time that the resort area has that super dull Pastoria City music that I dislike so much. It shows how generic it is if I didn't even notice the music of this place until now after playing for however many hundreds of hours across multiple save files. That's the mark of a bad song right there. And I've just insulted everybody that likes this song. I'm so sorry. Next is the Ribbon Syndicate. I do apologize. Oh, wait. What? Uh, 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 what? 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 I thought I had enough... I'll be right back! If you want to boost up your ribbon counter, there is but one place you need to go. Sunny Shore City! There is the effort ribbon that you can get at the Sunny Shore Market. Any Pokemon that has maxed out EVs is capable of getting one of those, so that'll inflate your total number of ribbons that you have earned. And if you're a poor sap that needs even more ribbons than that, aka me, you can also go to that lady that lives in the most inconvenient house location ever. Actually, it's not really all that inconvenient for whatever reason. I remember this needing Rock Smash. Talk to her. Julia says today is Monday. It's time to go get a, a brand, brand, uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, yeah. Story about getting, her getting splashed with water. Ooh. Uh, oh, I have to actually tell you a story about getting splashed with water. Uh Here's a great story about getting splashed with water. Old man, the end. <laughs> Old man. <th> <laughs> I didn't know that's where she was going to go with that. That sounds refreshing. It's made me feel awake. Thank you. Please give this to your Pokémon, the alert ribbon. Of course, once again, once a day, you are able to get a ribbon from her for free. Alternatively, if contests are your thing, you can compete in those and get ribbons that way. I might just have to do that yet if this still doesn't qualify. I thought it was 10 ribbons that you needed to earn in order to gain entrance to the ribbon syndicate. Now will you let me in? Why the heck not? I figured out what the problem was. And I'm kind of not happy. It is, I had the number correct that you need 10 ribbons across your party Pokemon to gain entrance. But they must be 10 different kinds of ribbons. Simply having multiples of the footprint ribbon or multiples of the effort ribbon, that doesn't help. You need to have 10 different kinds of ribbons. So that lady in Sunny Shore City that gives you a different ribbon for each day of the week, she is your friend. And I'll be right back. So, funny story. I was able to get 10 different types of ribbons across my party of Pokemon. In fact, I was able to do one better and get 10 different kinds of ribbons on one Pokemon. I went and talked to that lady each and every day and got each of the daily ribbons. She gives it to the lead Pokemon in your party, which happened to be... Acrobats. <laughs> I... I don't know how this would physically work. I am imagining it as this ball of ribbons with wings coming out of it, because that's all you would be able to see if you weren't just stabbing these ribbons through its wings to pin them on. <laughs> I'm, I guess Acrobat is by default the most fabulous blingin' member of the team, if anyone even still says that. Holy crap, I can't remember the last time I heard that other than when I just said it right now, but I'm just imagining Acrobat as this ball of ribbons and gold pins and all this other stuff. It's kind of funny to me. Let's go inside. I do... Wait, what? No, I have ten ribbons! What are you talking... Oh, okay. I thought she was actually going to turn me away because it's been a long time since I've seen this. Uh, yeah, I got lots of ribbons. You better not be rude or out of character to me because I got 10 ribbons on one Pokemon. You'd be, yeah, I would be, no, you should be honored to invite me in. Yeah, I will join you as a full-fledged member. I can find it in my, never mind. I'm just embarrassing myself here. Well, yeah, you better look forward to seeing me after you turn me away however many dang times. So the Ribbon Syndicate is... Uh, it's kind of underwhelming, actually, for it being an exclusive club you have to get into. Just being in here is a sign of status, you know. Sigh, aye, aye. Back. <laughs> Just a random side deck standing around which says that Skitty kind of seems in place here. If you go up to the main counter, 
She will allow you to purchase ribbons that you can only get through the Ribbon Syndicate. So, in other words, it's basically just a way for the have ribbons to get even more ribbons. For 10,000 Poké Dollars, you can buy one of these ribbons for one of your Pokémon. There are others. The second one will cost 100,000. The third one will cost 999,999. It's really stupid, but if you want to get lots of ribbons on your different Pokemon, you can do that. It'd be kind of nice if you could, I don't know, buy these before coming in here, considering the challenge presented to you that you need to get lots of ribbons, but hey, it's there. It's a little something you can do, I guess. I wish men would pay more attention to the way they dress themselves. I was about to say that I care a lot about my appearance and get dressed really nicely, but I'm actually kind of recording this in a t-shirt and my underwear, so <laughs> too much information for today. Let's go upstairs, yes. Uh, yeah, go up to the second floor and let me show what's up here. As far away as we can get from the point where I admitted that, the better. <laughs> okay. So next, we have this room. Yeah, a spa treatment. So, uh, she's saying it'll make her back girl friendly. Okay. So, this is just another place where you can have your Pokemon massage and it'll make them more friendly and all that good stuff. I've brought with us an egg, however. Because unlike other Pokemon massages... Oh, wait, what? No, you are... Do I talk to somebody else to this? Because I know that this is a thing. Where? Okay, I swore that you could have them massage an egg and it would be more friendly when it hatched. I remember distinctly that I've seen that. Also, your paneling is very slanty and uh, could use some renovating. <laughs> um, yeah, they're not letting me do this for an egg. I was going to show this. That's why I went and got an egg out of the PC and ooh, please relax all your muscles. Anything you say. <laughs> so this treatment has diamonds in it. It's also said to have pearls in it occasionally. Kind of a nice little thing that you can get. Uh, are you guys gonna do anything? Five members a day, uh, one a day to our members. Oh, all right. I thought you guys massaged eggs, but I guess you don't. Oh, dude, look at the paneling. It messes up as I move up and down. Look at that. <laughs> it's like this building is haunted or something. I don't know. Maybe they didn't have the 3D perspective thing turned off for this particular object. That's weird. <laughs> Don't think we've seen that at any other point. That is the Ribbon Syndicate in its entirety, however. We got Jubilife City to head off to next with very little rhyme or reason given to where we are going and when. Okay, the actual reason is just that I wanted to get some more major things that we've been putting off for a little while out of the way first, and then move on to some more minor, more obscure topics. At the global terminal of all places, there's something that I want to do. Not use any of these computers or talk to any of these receptionists. That won't do us any good and it'll just be a futile attempt to remember what things were like many years ago. This lady! Have you visited the Dress Up Data Studio? Have you put yours on exhibit, or do you look at other entries? Whether you're on exhibit or a viewer, I have a backdrop for you. She can give you different random backdrops. Here we get the city at night. Alternatively, you can win random backdrops from the Jubilife TV lottery. All of those random miscellaneous backdrops that can be obtained in these two ways are these that you see right here. But there is one more. There was another backdrop that was intended to be give away, given away through Nintendo events. The theater backdrop. It was never released. That's two times in a row now that we have had something that was intended to be distributed through a Nintendo event, but was never released and was such an arbitrary thing to hide behind an event in the first place to the point where even the publisher forgot about it. So there you go. And this music is awesome still. And hey, since it's so great, why not have it serve as a soundtrack for what we're going over next? There were two companion games to Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum released for the Wii. What do I mean by companion games? Games that are not fun at all if you don't already own one of the handheld games, similar to what Pokemon Stadium was in days of old. The first of the two is My Pokemon Ranch. This is little more than extra PC storage that you can put on your Wii system memory. It's kind of nice, and it is still downloadable from the Wii Shop channel to this day. 
Nintendo Wi-Fi connection might have shut down, most of the Wii channels might have shut down, but the Wii Shop channel is still up, and you can still purchase this and use it with your copy of Diamond, Pearl, or Platinum. There's some Pokemon that are obtainable in it that are kind of nice. The main helper NPC, Haley, she'll trade Pokemon with you and she can give you some stuff that is kind of hard to obtain in Sinnoh by itself. But more importantly, once you've deposited 250 Pokemon into my Pokemon Ranch, you will be gifted a Fion. Not a Manaphy, unfortunately, but it's hard to say that it's better than nothing after everything I said about it earlier. The real big one, though, and this is why I wanted to go over this, is that at 999 Pokemon out of the possible 1,000 deposited into my Pokemon Ranch, you will be gifted Mew. This is a tried and true way that you can get Mew without having to connect to any sort of event or anything like that. Yeah, at the time of recording this, there might be the whole Pokemon 20th thing going on and it's not hard to obtain right now, but this is a way that withstands the test of time. Does not matter what is going on, as long as the Wii Shop channel still remains online, you are able to download this app, deposit 999 Pokemon in it, and get a legitimate Mew without having to connect to anything or get lucky to have a game when an event happens to be going on. None of that involved whatsoever. Second is Pokemon Battle Revolution. This is the Pokemon Stadium of the fourth generation. I've had a lot of people asking me if I'm gonna do a full Let's Play on this game someday, and okay, there seems to be kind of a misunderstanding out there even to this day of what this game is. Even though Colosseum and XD were full-fledged RPGs in addition to the Pokemon Stadium-like content, this doesn't have anything like that. There is a single player, but it's just battling through stadiums and getting points, and it's basically the single player of Pokemon Stadium. There's not much of a game here, and back in the day, the main draw of why you would get it was that it would allow you to fight randoms online, whereas in the handheld games, you had to have the other person's friend code in order to challenge them under most circumstances. But the main reason why I want to talk about it is that there are event Pokemon that you can obtain in this game as well without needing to connect to the internet or do any of that stuff. So if you see a copy of this game available cheap somewhere and you want to have these Pokemon for your fourth generation games on a repeat playthrough or something, it's not a complete and total waste of money. There is actually something here for you. If you beat the main story, your reward is a level 10 Pikachu holding a light ball with the moves Tail Whip, Thunder Wave, Volt Tackle, and Surf! Yeah, you can get a surfing Pikachu just normally like this. Another thing that is normally really hard to obtain made a lot easier by having these fourth generation companion games. In addition, there are some passwords that you can type into the game that allow you to get some other event Pokemon that also don't require an internet connection. The first of which is a modest Magmortar holding a charcoal. It's got the moves Flamethrower, Psychic, Hyper Beam, and Solar Beam. It's pretty good. It's level 50, so you could immediately use it in Battle Frontier facilities and have it be competent in the way of moves and that kind of thing. It's all right. But the bigger and better of the two, and oh boy, this thing is overpowered if you wanted to use this. It is a level 50 Adamant Electivire holding a magnet, and its moveset is Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, Cross Chop, and Earthquake. <laughs> that is downright dangerous. This is one of the best gift Pokemon out there, and it's not difficult to obtain whatsoever. It's great. And on to one final minor topic. There is the matter of our trainer card. Oh. Wow, I'm very close to hitting 100 hours of playtime. <laughs> yeah, you can see just how much time it takes to do everything there is, doing the underground, all those alternate modes. I've ranted about this before. I have two stars on my trainer card. I got one for capturing 50 flags in Sinnoh Underground, and I got one more for becoming the champion of Sinnoh. There are three more that you can earn. The next star is obtained by winning one Master Rank Pokemon Super Contest, admittedly not that difficult to do since you only need to beat one of them and not all of them, thankfully. There is completing the National Pokedex, excluding event Pokemon. Again, not terribly difficult as long as you have the Game Boy Advance games or those companion games. It's made quite a bit easier through that. The last one, however, and I have personally done this, so I will shamelessly brag about it, is defeat 100 trainers in a row in Battle Tower. That's ruthless. 
It truly is. That will kick your ass. <laughs> by the time you get up to seven tournaments one in a row by the 49th battle, the difficulty of the trainers in there is no joke. And if you get screwed by luck just one time, you can be done right then and there. It's very difficult, but if you can persevere, your trainer card will change to black. The colors are red, blue, bronze, silver, gold, and black in that order. It's just kind of a nice little thing that you can do to show off to your friends, because in Versus they can look and see your trainer card and see just what your accomplishments are. But that's everything in the way of small, obscure topics. Where is it we want to go now? Veilstone City. We were told by Sharon that Saturn was trying to do something with Team Galactic of old and that the team split in two. We put a stop to what Sharon was doing, but we've yet to stop into the Galactic HQ and see what Saturn is up to. So it's you. I've heard about you and what took place at the Spear Pillar. Our leader, Master Cyrus, hated the very idea of Spirit. He hated Spirit for being incomplete. And yet, using fiery exhortations, he rallied the spirit of others. What he hated most, he used to control others. Isn't that ironic? That fascinated me. I wanted to see what he would do. And I did, at his side. But it's over. A world without spirit. Who would want such a thing? So what now? What to do with Team Galactic? But I've learned that extremism is never the solution. Perhaps we should really be searching for new sources of energy, instead of lying about it through our commercials. He has nothing else to say, it's just a nice little extra detail, and it does provide a little bit more closure for what happened to each of the members of Team Galactic. If you're wondering about Mars and Jupiter, the two of them have seemingly poofed out of existence. Even though Mars says that she's going to the distortion world to try to find where Cyrus is in that alternate dimension, she isn't there, and she's never returned. I believe that is every single minor miscellaneous topic that I had been either putting off or that we just hadn't gotten around to talking to because there wasn't a good place for it. If I've missed anything, be sure to let me know. Otherwise, next time on Pokemon Platinum, we are headed to Celestic Town, the final town that we have yet to revisit in our second journey through the Sinnoh region. See you guys then.